In this section, we will look at collisions in both one and two dimensions. We will look at the different types of collisions, elastic and inelastic, and the conservation of momentum and energy in both. Please follow along in section 7.3 and 7.4 in your textbook. There are two types of collisions. In both collisions, momentum is always conserved. In an elastic collision, kinetic energy is also conserved. And by conserved, we mean that the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final kinetic energy. And this is for the system, not the individual objects. A elastic collision is when the two objects bounce off of each other. This only happens in physics problems, really, and an ideal gas. So at a very atomic level, we can have elastic collisions. An inelastic collision is when kinetic energy is not conserved. In this case, the kinetic energy is converted into other forms. Most no normally heat or noise. The other, other option is for the objects themselves to become deformed or change shape. This is one of the, the common things when we have a car crash, that's always inelastic collisions. Everything that we experience in our daily lives is pretty much inelastic collisions because we hear it. Kinetic energy is converted into that noise. In this collision here, the tennis ball is hitting the racket. This collision is only slightly, very slightly actually, inelastic. There is definitely energy lost as to heat and going in to heat up the ball and on the racket strings. There's a little bit lost also to sound. This is going to be the very last time I try to marry you. I'll never die and disappoint you. On the most important day of his life, Philip Wayne, the world's most absent minded professor, made a few little mistakes. I hope you enjoyed that quick little movie. Uh, that was a movie from when I was a kid. Flubber is an example of something that's super elastic, where it gains kinetic energy. This is pretty much uh, impossible in the real world unless we use chemical or nuclear potential energy. Uh, there are not many instances where flubber really exists because the chemical or nuclear potential energy, it may not be safe for humans to actually be able to hold, or that fuel source or that energy source ends up getting is used up. No matter what, momentum is always conserved. Here are some examples of some collisions that we may see throughout the year. First, two trains connecting. This would be an inelastic collision. The trains 
connect together and move off as one, so they combine their mass. There's also energy loss to the sound of them colliding. The hailstone is also inelastic. The hailstone will deform the roof of the car, changing the shape, therefore energy is lost. And the two skaters on a frictionless ice surface will be the closest thing in real life to an elastic collision. And we will often say that friction or forces can be ignored, so therefore it is an elastic collision in this case. Or actually, in the picture that we see, it's more of an explosion. Similarly to motion in one and two dimensions, where we went from looking at just things in the x direction to thing uh, to motion in, in the x and y direction. Momentum and collisions of momentum are examined using just the x axis or just the y axis. Each velocity acts independently of the other, and momentum is always conserved within one axis. This means that the velocity in the y-axis, or excuse me, the momentum in the y-axis is always concerned, conserved, and the momentum, on the momentum in the x-direction is also always conserved. Here's a sample problem for the lecture tonight. This one involves a serious calculation that if you don't take your time to set it up, will be quite a bear. First, find the momentum of each object in here. In this case, the red and the blue ball. Then, break the momentum of each object into the components of x and y direction. Remember, the total in the x direction before, or the initial total in the x direction, is going to equal the total in the, y, in the x direction afterwards. Take a moment to set this up, and then go through and find the final velocity of the red ball. Here's a little chart to help you out to solve this problem. Remember, the in total initial momentum is equal to the total final momentum along any one direction, x or y. If you've listened to this far, I hope that you at least have attempted this problem in some steps, Remember, I'm going to give you a little hint that the angle ends up being around 10 degrees, probably close to 10 and a half degrees depending on your rounding. Hopefully that can help you out in finding the final velocity of the red ball.